so I need to get my files from last week. If you still have, if you if you're working on your on your flash drive, we're going to work with your files, or you can get a copy of my files. Remember, they're in the computer network, and then Campus Android One. So last week's work is right there. I'm going to copy that to my flash drive, and then I'm going to change it to today's date. So I like to have a, a new copy to work with. Yes, we are doubling the size of our, you know, our storage. We we keep making a copy, making a copy, but this project is barely like one megabyte, so it's not taking up that much space. Once it is an Android project, it'll be about 20 megabytes, so you might not want to copy it over and over, but that's up to you how you want your your workflow. But I'm going to copy the project from my network folder. You can use yours, of course. And I'm going to put today's date on it. Today is the 23rd. So you want to copy over the project. Today's the 23rd. That's what I'm going to work on. We'll get into our project and we're going to edit the index file. So let's edit with Notepad++ the index.html file. Yeah, if you can give me your flash drive. Can you put the 23rd on the server? No, the 23rd is today's work. What you want to do is get a copy of the 18th and just change it to the 23rd. Okay, so what we're going to do then is create a side panel. I'll show you the example from, from my site just to see what we're going toward. Remember, we can access the example site whenever you'd like, vmcampus.com slash sdce. And what I mean by the side panel, which is in the art screen, we have the art calendar. Click on that, you see a side panel slides into place. That's what we're going to create. This is useful for quick information. It can scroll. This can have an independent scroll, so you can have a lot of content and it'll just scroll. Or it might be better for just some quick information that appears on the side. We'll create that. We're also going to create over on the computer's screen. Remember, we've got uh, these placeholders here and you're going to click and then they have a new screen so that that'll entail creating new uh, sections we'll get to that and then also I want to get to back on the home screen we'll have some content we'll have a little info button you click that and then you get um, a pop-up screen notice this one looks different because it doesn't fill the whole screen it's a it's its own independent pop-up so those are the things we'll be looking at today. We'll start first with this panel. The way the panel will work is that there is going to be a, a separate section for it, but it works a little bit different, and it's going to use an HTML5 tag, the HTML5 tag known as the aside, A-S-I-D-E, aside. It's like side content. It's an aside to the main article. So the way it works is it's related to an existing section. Let's go find the section where we've got the art classes. 
So remember, we've got a section, and one of them is called Art. So you can either scroll, or you can get in the habit of search, Control F, and I've got ID equals Art. I've only got one thing in the whole project called ID equals Art, so this should take us directly to the right spot. In my case, it's line 79. So let's go to line 79. to the art section. This is going to work different from other things that we deal with. Uh, this is content that is related to the art section. Therefore, it's not a separate section. It's an aside. It's like extra content related to the section. So actually, we will create this within the section of art. So I'm going to say after line 79, press enter, and we will create the aside tag. You might have heard of, a, of an aside as in, uh, it was mentioned in aside. It was said besides the main uh, speech. So an aside is a section, is a part of our project in addition to a main section. So this aside is where we're going to have the, the content that appears in the art section. And it's going to need several types of uh, jQuery mobile properties. One of the first and important ones is the data role. This aside has a data role of panel. So it's going to behave like a panel. Again, this has meaning, data role has meaning because we've got jQuery mobile. <coughs> We have different ways to display the um, the aside. We have different ways to animate it. I'll explain those in a moment. But then we need an ID so that we can access it. We'll call this Art Cal. This is the Art Calendar. For the moment, I'll just put a, a paragraph tag here, and we'll say side panel. We'll fill it with more meaningful stuff in a moment. I want to make sure this works before I fill in the main content. And so notice, this is what I've got so far, and notice its placement. It's in a side, open close tags, and it's right after the section. It's within the section of art, before the head. We could have a bunch of content here inside of the aside. If we were to save and run this, we would not see this, or we should not see it because we haven't accessed it, accessed it yet. So the way that we access it is uh, a button that'll make the panel appear. So within this art section, if we scroll down to about line 136 or so, this begins the grid. Remember, we've got an invisible grid that's four by four. Four rows, I'm sorry, two columns, two rows, uh, two by two. So we've got an invisible grid here, UI grid A. We can have more than one row and column by using more where it says UI grid A, we could have B or C or D. This kind of works not quite intuitively, and I actually forgot this is just a single row, two columns. How can we tell? Well, I remember when we created it, but also by looking at the code. This is saying grid A, which basically means one row. We've got one row. If we had a grid B, two rows. Grid C, three rows. And then we've got um, the columns, block A and block B. So let's say in block UI block A, notice it's a div, there's a division here, this is one of the cells, so to speak, of the table. We're going to write here art calendar.
our calendar. And that is going to be a link. So we'll wrap the A tag around it. Our calendar A tag. It's going to be a link. So we need, of course, href. That's the code to link to something. The something is going to be the aside that has a unique ID. Since it's an ID, we need the pound symbol. What did we call that aside again? What was its ID? Artical. Yes, Artical. And I, call, I named it with a capital C. If you didn't use a capital C when you added the ID for that aside, don't use a capital C. But I wrote Artical with a capital C, and so I must reference it uh, with a capital C. It is case sensitive. <coughs> We still have a little bit more to refine this, but let's just see if this works so far. Go ahead and save it. We've created the aside. We've given it an ID. We've given it a data role that it's a panel. Here we have a simple link that says, go to that art calendar. Let's see if it works. Go to art cal. Simple text link. Click it. Side panel. And so when you click on that and click outside of it, it goes away. Did everyone get that? Did everyone get that? OK, so. What happens when you click on it? Because I don't have any images. So the, um, that's a simple link that just opens up the art calendar, the art cal aside. And it's a plain old link which looks out of place within our project, within our app. So what we're going to do is change that to a button. So we'll go back to the href here. We'll add data role button. Now with data roll button we have a button. There's the, the shape, drop shadow, rollover effects, and all of that. Notice it's not going all the way to the edge of the document. That's because of the grid. The invisible grid is there. And again, I, I keep forgetting because it's not intuitive. It is a four box grid. Uh, there's two columns and two rows. Because this is the very first column of the first row. This is the second column of the first row. This is the first column of the second row. And this is the second column of the second row. So there's four invisible boxes. And notice then it's taking up only that amount of space. The, uh, the button works, but we might also put in a, an icon. We've got the built-in jQuery mobile icons, so I will continue. After data roll, we can add data-icon equals, and it would be so nice to have an icon for calendars. We do. Calendar. We have an icon built in that looks like a little calendar. So now if you see, you've got the little calendar icon.
let me check something here and then we'll see if this is feasible okay we'll do that in a moment so um, we've got then the button and it works it, it makes the panel slide open right there we didn't specify what kind of slide however and if you look at the example the example site it had a particular type of animation and the example do you see it's subtly different that panel slides over the existing content whereas the one that we just did pushes the content over revealing so we never specified what kind of animation we wanted so it did the default which looks nice and you might be fine this way you, you keep it that way it's fine if you want to do something more like this example we have that ability also how would we possibly know what are the different types of animations we can do here? Obviously the instructor can tell you, but what if I wasn't here? Let's go to jQueryMobile.com. Let's look it up. Let's RTFM. Have you heard of that acronym before? It stands for Read the Funky Manual. So we're going to go to jQueryMobile.com and we're going to look at what are the possible options for uh, this this panel jQueryMobile.com will go over to the demos so at the top click on demos we're currently using version 145 so click on that latest stable version and we've got a section on one of these boxes right here of widgets tabs panel pop-up let's look at panel flexible by design panels can be used for navigation forms inspector inspectors and more example left panels overlay looks like that reveal looks like that push looks like that so overlay is the one where the panel appears over your current content. Reveal is the default. What it does is it pushes the top content out of the way to reveal the content below. Do you see any difference between reveal and push? The shadow is gone, but the way that push seems to work is it's like that content was hidden outside here and then it pushes into place, knocking that over. Whereas reveal is like the content is already here and then the top just reveals over. See that? Compared to push. Um, I have a question. Yes. Because I don't have any images. I don't know if it's because all the links are not there. I'm using the files but there are no links to, I guess, the jQuery. Oh. Okay, I'll help you in just a moment. So the way this is working is basically to select one of three options, and we can also put it on the right or the left. The default was the left. If you want the panel to appear on the right, you can do that. And basically... Basically, it's uh, which of the uh, displays do we use. So if you read here, data display equals overlay, or push, or reveal, and then that will give you the different animations. So we'll go back to the, um, to the code. We will attach that to the href, data roll button, data icon calendar, and actually we attach it to the aside itself. This is a property that's added to the aside, to the 
panel itself. So let's back up to where you've got the aside, which I don't remember where it's at, so I'll do search. I've only got one aside at the moment, line 80. Doesn't quite matter where you add it, but I like to keep the ID as the last property. When I scan my code, I'm, I always know where to look for IDs. And we will add then data-display equals. And if you don't want to use the built-in reveal, you have push and you have overlay. So try overlay, save it, and run it and see the difference. Then you can decide which you like better. So data display, in my case overlay. And now if I if I save and run that, our calendar, it uh it overlays. And notice that then if I click anywhere outside, it goes away. But someone might not quite um, think of clicking outside of it. They might expect some sort of close. So further looking at the documentation, opening a panel, closing a panel, clicking the link that opened the panel, swiping left or right, or tapping the escape key will close the panel. So apparently also if you press escape, that takes it away too. A person might not have known that. Uh, by default, panels can also be closed by clicking outside the panel onto the page contents. To di prevent this behavior, add the data dismissible false attribute to the panel. It's possible to have the panel and page sit side by side on a wider screen and so forth. So that's another option there, data dismissible false. Right now, you can close it by clicking outside of the panel, but if you don't want someone to do that or on purpose or accidentally, you can do data dismissible false. It's common to also add a close button inside the panel. To add the link that will close the panel, add the data-rel, or relationship, close attribute to tell the frame to close the panel when clicked. It's important to ensure that this link is also makes sense if JavaScript isn't available. So we recommend that the href point to the ID of the page to which the user should jump when closing, for example. So this one shows in the panel there is a link that says close panel. It's got an href back to take you back to where it came from, which in our case would be the art screen. And it's also got a data rel close so that it has the relationship so that it closes the panel. That might be a good idea. Let's see about incorporating that. Let's say we want a close button in our in our aside. I think one of the good ways to do this is within the aside panel, let's add the header tag. With a data role of header. So I'm adding that to the so I'm adding that to the um, aside header. And in the aside, I'll write close panel. We'll make it look better than this, of course. But uh, we'll do close panel, a tag, because it's going to be a link, as per the documentation, href, to take us back to the art screen, and then data rel equals close. So the meaning of this button will be to close the side panel. And yes, we can already do that by clicking outside of it. But uh, we have to think about different ways to accomplish the same thing. 
Um, users might already have an expectation of how things work. They might be savvy. They might know that you can press escape on the keyboard to close that. They might know that you can tap outside of the, uh, the panel to close it. They might figure out to swipe it back over when it, once it's the app on the actual device. They might know to swipe it back. They might not know any of that. They might only be looking for, well, where's the close, pan where's the close button? Uh, so if we built in if we build in a few redundancies, the people that can uh, interface with your app in one way will be satisfied, and the people that can interface with it in another way will be satisfied, and therefore we are reducing what is known as user friction. Uh, I don't remember. Remind me, have I mentioned that term friction in this class? I teach like six classes, so sometimes they blend together. Um, friction is when uh, there's something that um, prevents the user from accomplishing a task easily. There's friction whenever there's some sort of roadblock. Let's say you want, on a website, you want to comment. Someone wrote something, you want to comment, you've got a brilliant comment, there's a comment box, you want to fill it in, but first it asks you to register, and then to confirm your email, and all of that. So I know that I myself, I don't want to jump to so many hoops, a lot of friction, I go elsewhere. I don't post my brilliant comment. You might have experienced the same thing. Anything that gets in your way from accomplishing your tax, task is friction. So I want to make things as frictionless as possible for my user to accomplish their task. And the point is that I'm showing more than one way to close this panel. Let's see how that works. Save it and run it. Oops, that looks weird. Did I miss anything? Header, data rule, header. Hmm. The side panel might not actually take a header. I suppose we could fix it with CSS, but that would be going against the concept. So actually what we'll do here instead of having instead of the header, let's remove the header tag. Let's just leave the let's just leave the link. So I remove the header. I have to double check the documentation to see if a header is allowed in an aside, especially if it's a data role of panel. But anyway, we'll leave that and we will data roll it to button. Data icon, we have a caret L, that's an L, not a number one. This is a little arrow that points to the left. And then here's a new one. Data dash icon pos. Data icon position. Let's say no text. What this will do is that text that I wrote over here, close panel, will get hidden. And it will only show the icon. So we're saying, don't use the text, just use the icon. We'll take that part of it out of the header? Take the header out. Take the header out of the header. And comment it out. Comment it out or delete it, yes. T I, I took it out of the, the top of the aside right there. Not the, not the one of the main content in the aside. Okay, I think that might work. 
Did you get that result? Did you get an icon that is only the icon, not the text? Let's see, where did my code go? Right here. So that's working with uh, data, icon, pos, pos, no text. Notice no text is one word, no spaces, no dashes. It's an L because it stands for left. It points to the left. So if we put an R, it would point to the right. Yes. Oh, does it? Okay. I think so. What line are you on? Just a moment. Let's see. Well, no, in my oh. case, it showed the icon and the text. I'm on line 82. Because the default behavior is that it will show an icon and text. And so with data, icon, pos, it should take that away. Right, did that work for everyone? Anyone need some help? Question? Hmm? Question? Oh, no. Oh. <clears throat> so remember the previous time that I taught this, we had this big discussion about should it be caret L or caret R? And some people were saying, well, I think caret R would work better. R for right. And then because people were saying, well, logically I feel that that arrow pointing to the right means back to the content. Whereas I was putting the L because I feel that that means move the panel back to the left. See that? So how many of you like caret L? Raise your hand. Okay. How many of you like caret R? Okay. Well, if you want to avoid that, we also have the one that's the little X. I forget what it's called. I'm going to guess that it's close. You can look it up, of course. No, it wasn't that one. Yes. All right, one one moment. Uh, so actually, it's data icon delete. Data icon delete will uh, make that little X. So if you don't want the, the angle to the left or to the right, you can use the X, and that gives you a little close.
you use it between words, data icon, okay. and then it's always going to be equal something in quotes. Mm -hmm. So remember to use the quotes. Okay. Thank you. Oh, I have a problem. I have to change this. Data icon. Data icon. Data icon. Data icon. That's, that should be the name of your icon. The plus you start with the A tag and then finish it. Okay. And this is where you're going to write hard to tell. And an icon is where the icon is up, so that's trying to get down. All right, so this, uh, this that we are doing is to create the side panel to display some quick information within a particular screen. This is information related to this main screen. That's why we added it to an aside tag. Aside was designed. It's semantic HTML5. It has a meaning. That's what semantic is. Semantics is that it has a meaning. And the meaning is that this is content related to other content, but it's extra side content. That's why we, we wrote the aside tag, and it's within the section of this page of art. We could have more than one. We could create another aside down here, give it another ID, and have another button that opens that other content. So we can have as many of those as, we, as we'd like. Um, we seem to have the structure of it working. 
So then we would uh, deal with actually adding uh, content. Uh, not too complicated, but we will add some content right here. It's just a side panel. We want it to have some content. So let's say that this art calendar is going to be a list of some of these uh, art events that the college is, have, is having. This is not going to be dynamic content in that it connects to a database and shows us the real live content. That'll be more complicated to talk about later. I just want to add a little bit of content to the side panel so that it looks like content. So simply simply um, we'll leave that paragraph there for the moment. Uh, let's add a heading 1. We'll say uh, last month um, was May. That'll have a paragraph Or actually, let's do it just for fun. Bullet points. So I'm going to have the month of May and June and July. And then I'm going to have some bullet points about some events that are happening in that particular month. So to make bullet points, it's the UL tag. There's no tag called bullet points. Again, HTML was invented basically by nerdy people. So it's got these ideas that are nerdy. An unordered list means bullet points. There's no order to the list. So obviously that means bullet points. An OL, conversely, an OL list is an ordered list. There's an order. One, two, three, or A, B, C, or Roman numeral one, two, three, etc. So UL is unordered list, bullet points. OL is ordered list with numbers. Each item of the list, then, within the UL is an LI, a list item. So each bullet point is going to be an LI. And actually, LI is kind of agnostic in that it doesn't, uh, it doesn't care if it's inside of an ordered list or an unordered list. Even if you make this bullet point, or numbered list, which we'll see in a moment, we still just simply use LI, list item. So let's say for the month of May, there was the art, there was student show. And then there was also, so another bullet point, another LI, student show. Let's say there was also a portfolio review. So a couple of events that happened in May. We'll say heading to June. Another bullet point list. Make up whatever you'd like here. Let's say uh, sometimes there's also an instructor's instructor show, instructor art show, portfolio review, uh, what other art events could we have? Guest speaker, guest artist. And we have the art fair. So I'm just putting in a little bit of content, heading 1 May, heading 2 June, some bullet points. Let's see how that looks. Looks fine. So, again, using headings to demarcate sections, hierarchical sections. And then the bullet points, we see that. 
bullet points. Just, uh, just to contrast, you don't have to do this, but I'll show you. If instead those were unordered lists and we change them to ordered lists, If you change simply UL to OL, you get numbers. We could style that with a little CSS to choose. Uh, we could have it ordered with, uh, with alphabetical letters. We could have it ordered with Roman numerals, uppercase or lowercase, and so forth. But obviously the OL, the ordered list, you would use for a specific purpose and the OL for another purpose the UL for one list, the OL for another. OL, ordered list, you have to do these things in this order, like a, like a recipe. You wouldn't add the milk to the cake before you beat the eggs. You would want the eggs beat, it, beat first and then the, the milk. So an ordered list would work great in that case. But then like a shopping list, as long as you get the bacon, eggs, and the ham, you're fine. It doesn't have to have a specific order. So then an unordered list would work there. And OL is the ordered list counterpart. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna take that back. I don't need an ordered list. You can keep it if you want, but I don't need an ordered list for those items. In the side panel, I just put some text, but I could of course put pictures. If I have a picture, I could add the image tag and put the picture and. Maybe you need to use a little CSS to keep it constrained in the right size, or it may maybe fall out of the panel. I could put in other things in that panel. I could probably put in like even some of these jQuery mobile components, like a list view or a drop-down list and all of that, but really the panel should be for quick information, uh, not a very complex item. So did everyone get that working? Yes. Is there a reason why the is larger than like, in the main? Yeah, the um, because of jQuery Mobile, the CSS file, there's some rule in there somewhere that says if there's a heading two inside of an aside with a data role of panel, show it a certain way. And if there is a heading one inside of an aside data row panel show it another way so there's some inherent the short answer is there's some inherent jQuery mobile that's making it look like that it's going against the the general concept of heading 1 heading 2 to style it in a different way if I don't want that then I would write some CSS to override that it may not be as easy as as writing um, some CSS that we've looked at before when we get to it, we'll be actually dissecting more of the jQuery mobile to fully be able to customize it, but that'll be a to-do later on if we want to change that. So, second question is, can you use the delete icon on the right? Yeah, that one, uh, I've got to look it up because I tried to do a little trick to move it over and it didn't do it, so there is going to be a way to do it. Mm -hmm. I just have to look up a, a good way, or if anyone has any ideas, any CSS pros out there, a quick way to move it over to the right. I tried to put in a div text align to the right. That didn't do it. Maybe we could do a, a float right. Um, let's see if that works. We'll do some live testing right here. Uh, I want to make that move over to the right. Should we put that just to the href, or should we put it in a div? Um, let's try a div first. I don't write this unless it works. Obviously, we're doing inline, um, doing inline CSS, which is not as recommended. But let's just see if this works. Okay. So, if we, if you copy this code exactly, it'll do it. However, before you write that code, this is really going to only apply to this panel and we may have seven panels. I don't want to go into each of those panels to do the same thing. 
let's see about doing this a little bit more efficiently. It will be a little bit more work, but it'll work off in the end. So let's write this instead. Um, where you had where you have the href of art and the close button i wrote the div tag i wrapped the div tag around it a div is a generic container it has some inherent attributes and so forth alignments and such but we can override it with css a moment ago you then saw me write style equals and then something called float right that did the job, but it's not as efficient as it could be. So instead, we're going to use CSS. I'm going to add a class to the div. And remember, a class we can reuse multiple times per project. And that's what we might want for this close panel, this close icon. So I made up a class here, close right. It could be anything we want, but close right popped into my head, and it seems it'll probably work. So then, after I write this and save it, now we need to go over to our CSS file and define what does close right mean. There's no meaning to close right at the moment. That's when we'll add the float right. So check that this looks like mine. I'm going to indent that over just so that I can see that this is part of the div here. So div slash div space class equals quotes close right capital R. Let's edit the CSS file now. Go back to your folder of this project and right-click to edit the codica.ext.css file. So I'm going to go back to my project folder. project folder. We're going to edit this CSS file. So kodika.extra.css, right click, edit with notepad. This is where we've got our CSS stuff. Let's go to the very bottom. And now we're going to define, okay, what does close right mean? What does the class close right mean, or what does it do? Since it's a class, we have to start it with a dot. Close right. Curly brace, close curly brace. So now here we're going to define what close right, what it does. And there's a property for aligning things um, called float. We have left, we have right. Um, so we would write float colon space right semicolon. So now wherever we use class equals close right, in theory, it should float the element to the right. It may not always exactly work because other CSS may get in the way. But from this testing, it seems that this will work inside of a side panel. So now if I have seven more side panels, I just attach this class to my close, and it'll close. We work with two separate files here, so you have to remember to save both. You have to remember to save both the CSS file and the HTML file. You can click that little Save All icon. Save it and run it and see if the little X appears on the right side. If it's missing the X, check, check that your data icon says data icon equals delete. Simply the word delete. Now I'm used to just using the keyboard shortcut to launch Firefox. Careful, because if you do that here, it's going to show you a nice screen of code. You want to remember to launch or to run your, your HTML file. And the purpose of that was to move that uh, X to the right, float it to the right. 
dot close right. So now we've got a side panel. It floats. It comes out of the left side. It overlays on top of my existing content. We've added content. We've got the close button. Now it's aligned to the right. We'll do one more thing, then we'll take a break. Um, the button, the art calendar button. The art calendar button is. Um, It's on the top left grid, the top left box of this four box invisible grid. And it's stretching out this far. Obviously, if you've got a larger viewport like this, it stretches out even further. I don't want it to stretch out that far. But I do want it to sort of be aligned within that quadrant. So this time we'll work backwards because I, I already looked at a way to do this. We're going to write the CSS first this time. Obviously this would have required effort to figure out what to write. And because we, are go we might apply this to more than one grid, again we should use a class. Class, class can be reused. So we'll write dot uh, and we'll call this grid align center. It's a good idea to name your CSS rules, either IDs or classes. Uh, name them something meaningful. When you've got a few hundred lines or a thousand lines of this stuff and you've named something like, maybe close right isn't the best, a grid align center might be better. At a glance you'll be able to tell what it is if you look at your wall of code. So I'm calling this grid align center. And I think on this one we can simply do text dash align center. My point is here that I'm going to have the contents of the grid centered within each box of the grid. There's many ways to do it. Of course, this one seemed to work fine a moment ago text dash align center. So we need to then attach this class to the grid. Again, careful with the spelling. So what I would recommend here, if you forgot how you spell this, here's my trick. Whenever I make a, a CSS uh, selector, I double click it and then copy it. So I'm just going to copy that name and paste it where I need it, because I might forget that I put a capital A or not. Even if you misspell things, this is another thing. You might have written center in some weird way, like C-E-N-T-R-E, -E, who would do that? So you might have a, a, a spelling that's wrong, and uh, as long as you keep using the wrong spelling consistently, this will still work. That's the funny thing. You could totally misspell this, but as long as you use that misspelling throughout your code, it'll work. So anyway, grid align center is the CSS that we created. Let's go back to the index file. And let's go back to where that grid was. Uh, line 152. We've got the div class UI grid A. This is our grid. And to this, um, oh, wait a minute, we've already got a class. Mm. Okay, I think we'll be okay if we do this. Within the quotes, Going to be a pseudo uh, pseudo class, not a pseudo class. A um, it's another term for it. it. Might be that might be the right term. I have to look it up. But I'm trying to apply one class to another class. Let me just confirm here. 
the pseudo class would have the colons, wouldn't it? D dash inline true. Let me just confirm this. I did it a different way. I need to confirm the code over there. Hmm. It seemed to have worked. Okay. Well, um, okay. So we already had the div class UI grid A, and notice I added to it. In a sense, I'm telling it to use both of these classes, in a sense. So I'm saying keep the UI grid A, which comes from jQuery Mobile, and then I've added my grid align center that I just invented right now. There's a space between the two, very important. And then I also, to actually see this effect of alignment, in the center, I added to the icon, the data roll button, I added data dash inline true. What that does is it makes the button inline in that right now the default behavior is data inline false. And that default behavior is that this button is going to expand to take up as much space as it can. So it expanded to take up the width of that whole quadrant we said instead data inline true. And that basically just means take up as much space as the content inside the button, which is the word art calendar and the icon. So save both. Now there's the button. It's not stretching out to the whole quadrant. It's only taking up as much space as necessary. That's working a few ways. Data inline true. That would be the number one way that the button doesn't stretch out all the way. But if we only had data inline true, the button would be leaning to the left. That's the default behavior. It would be all the way to the left. So then we invented the CSS selector grid align center. And we say text align center, because in a technical sense, the button is still text. It's just fancy looking text. So if that worked, great. We've got a button that accesses the panel. Um, that was a new element, the aside element. I'm going to take a break at this point. If it's not quite working, I'll, I'll put my code right here. And then uh, let's take a break, and we'll be back in 10 minutes. We'll be back at 7.23. Uh,